All right, welcome, welcome. Thank you guys for joining us. Um, I'm Kelly B, and I'm about to be joined by Mike Rust and Kelly T. There's Kelly T. Hey. All right, I'm uh, Mike and Kelly. I'm a little surprised by our results today. We have a lower <laughs> attendance rate in terms of our uh, webinar than we've had up till now. I think probably that means people are webinared out, but um, well, let's, you know, nobody, nobody's getting a haircut from their spouse, partner, or roommate. I'm a little surprised by that. I, I, you know, I'm surprised that everybody's so honest. <laughs> it's a very honest group. Uh, see, you know, I feel like I feel like there's some people saying that they they're glad their video off is off when in reality they just look good no matter what. That's probably right. Exactly. Okay. Exactly. It's a modest yes. group. It's they're modest yes. and humble. Yes. Humble yes. group. Yeah. Awesome. Clearly, this is the best group we've ever had. The Absolutely. Best Best webinar ever. Already, we can tell. All right. <laughs> we, can, we just should quit now. All right. Well, thank <laughs> you guys for joining us. Really excited that you're here. Um, I personally, my wife gave me a haircut and, you know, she did okay. This isn't did her great. best work, but she did pretty Let's see the back. Let's see the back, Kelly. Yeah, you don't need to see <laughs> the back. All right, so let's get started. Uh, we got a lot to cover today, everyone. We're gonna we're gonna talk about dental unit water lines and uh, the maintenance steps you need to be to take uh, to be CDC compliant for reopening uh, after COVID nineteen and then beyond. Um, there are some unique challenges that COVID has created for dental unit water line maintenance. We want to talk about and make sure you're on top of, and then also uh, just being CDC compliant moving forward and, and um, being completely good. So before we get to the meet and greet, or actually, no, we, we are doing the meet and greet. Before we get to the meet of the uh, webinar, we're gonna do a meet and greet, of course, practicing proper social distancing. Uh, Kelly Timmis joins us. She's our senior consultant and education specialist. Um, got a background in biology and she was a registered nurse for several years and has been with ProEdge for three years. And aside from the gentleman I'm going to introduce next, I'm pretty sure that Kelly T has probably done more in dental uh, to help people get better waterline test scores and test results than anybody else in the industry. Uh, she consults with hundreds of practices every week um, and does educational things like this webinar to help practices learn uh, learn what it takes. And so Kelly T, thanks for joining us. She is Kelly T, and that's because I'm Kelly B. There can be a little bit of confusion there. So uh, that's how we try and keep it straight. She's the T, I'm the B. Um, Mike Rust, our regional sales manager. Uh, he's been with ProEdge since the beginning for nine over nine years. Um, and has been test been in the water testing game even before we were we were called Pro Edge. Um, so over 15 years experience with waterline testing. Got lots of experience in the dental industry. And uh, you know, Mike, there are people out there with credentials after their name that that uh, beat yours, but <laughs> there are fewer people. There there are not many people in the world that have done more on the ground in the field practical investigating of dental unit water lines than you. Um, and so we really appreciate you, you bringing your expertise with us. I'm the marketing guy, I'm Kelly B. Uh, I've been with ProEdge for two years now and I absolutely love working with this team. Uh, it truly is an honor to get to work with special people like Mike and Kelly who care so much about you guys, our customers and and just dental healthcare professionals in general. and, and um, the integrity of, of patient safety. So uh, really glad to be here and hopefully I can add a little something here today, maybe a joke or two. Uh, Good haircut, a new haircut. Yeah. yeah. All right, Kelly T, take us through it. What are we trying to accomplish today? Awesome, well, thank you for that uh, kind of introduction. You were way too humble. You bring so much to the, the table. Uh, God, right. you're so, so important and just uh, amazing to have on our team. 
uh, I'm Kelly T. I introduce myself uh, even to people like friends now. I just, Kelly T, that's just, that's me. Uh, but really, I, I am so, I'm blessed to have this job. I get to work with offices all week, um, letting them know how to uh, obtain and maintain clean water lines. So that's the main objective today. Uh, the first thing we want to arm you with the knowledge, um, become effective and efficient at, at maintaining water lines in your office. We want you to become that safe water advocate. And we'll teach you ways to do that. Um, we want to help you know how to prepare after COVID-19 when life kind of gets back to normal. So we want you to establish a good protocol uh, moving forward. And then finally, and most importantly, we want to thank you. Uh, no matter what realm of dentistry you're in, uh, we know how hard you work. We see what you do. Uh, you're not overlooked by any of us at ProEdge. And we just, we appreciate every single one of you. So thank you. Yeah, we've seen some job descriptions out there of what it looks like to be a dental assistant, hygienist, and dentist, uh, or even an office manager, practice manager. And my goodness, uh, you got a lot on your plate. So uh, we, we as you know, th all three of us sit in dental chairs at least every six months and receive your care. And, and so as, as patients ourselves, we so appreciate not only all that you have to juggle, but uh, all that you do to keep us safe, including be on this presentation. So um, really appreciate that. A couple things before we get started, just want to make sure you know that we, ProEdge is available for consultations and testing. Uh, Kelly T and her team for consultations are working remote, and so they're able to receive your calls and, and answer your emails just the same as we usually do. Um, so any of your questions we're here for to give you answers or guidelines or feedback or whatever we can do to help. And then also our testing lab is available as well. Uh, when we first started doing these webinars several weeks ago, uh, you know, it was 20 samples that were coming and we're back up to 350, 400 um, and, and uh, back it up to being super busy. But um, so that's good news. And that points to kind of what we got coming here in the second. But um, just so you know, this is a live webinar. This is all happening as we go. And you'll be emailed a recording of it. So if you want to refer back to it, you're more than welcome. Uh, that email will go out in the next 24 hours. Um, if you have questions, we're totally excited about answering those. We love the Q&A aspect of this webinar. And, and so utilize the Q&A function. Now, that, that is a specific uh, part of Zoom. So we're doing this on Zoom. You want to use the Q&A if you go to your menu bar. It's either at the top or the bottom of your screen. Um, you can see... Uh, the Q&A button, and you can click on that and ask us questions. It's a lot easier for us to access that than the chat. Um, so if if you can if you can do that for questions, that would be great. It looks like camera's saying that there's some choppiness. Um, hopefully that gets corrected. Uh, Tamara, that's really just an internet connection issue. It, it could be on our end. It could be on your end. So apologize for that, but hopefully we can Stick with us. I'm sure it'll it'll kind of correct itself here in a second. Um, we do have CPE available at the end of this webinar, so uh, we'll, we'll, it'll be a self study. Unfortunately, we don't have the capability to do live CE at this point, but we will continue to work on that. But uh, self study CE will be able to give you a link. That you'll you'll be able to download a great ebook by John Molinari and Nancy Dewhurst, two of the premier infection control experts in the industry. Um, and you'll be able to take that quiz and get two CE credits that way. And we'll go over not only a lot of the things that they, uh, that they revealed in their ebook, but also uh, we'll cover every single question. So you'll, if you, uh, if you pay attention, ha have some fun with us today, you'll, you'll be able to pass that test with flying colors and, and get those CEs. Um, this is good news right? Like I said, it used to be when we first started doing this, we were getting 21 samples in our lab and now we're back up to 400. And that's because there's a whole lot of green in dentistry. Uh, there's 42 states that are currently open for elective procedures. Um, and hopefully we're all doing that safely and, and, um, and walking that line, but uh, it's great to be back, right? It's great to be back in, in dentistry. So we're glad that you're with us today. Hopefully we can help you uh, go into that green really safe. And to that, Mike, let's get started with COVID-19 and dental unit water lines. There's been a lot of information out there about COVID. It's changing constantly, but we know uh, pretty well 
that COVID-19 isn't inside of Devon Water Lines. But you talked to Shannon Mills. Take us through that conversation and, and tell us what's, what's what. Yeah, well, we asked him point blank if COVID could populate down in a water lines, and he said it's very unlikely, and it's really not what we need to be worried about. He he reminded me that uh, it's a you know COVID. Think of the way it's transmitted, right? It's through droplets from a host. It's a airborne pathogen. It's a, a virus that's not likely to replicate well in water. So he said, well, we don't need to worry about it. Um, there's a there's uh, other things to worry about in Delinquent Water Lines. And there's other pathogens that grow in Delinquent Water Lines if they're left untreated. And we'll dive into that a little bit more. Uh, it, we, so we asked him, what about my tablet or my straw or my shock solution? Will it kill the coronavirus? And he said, the same, essentially the same thing. We don't know. It hasn't been tested, but it's not like that. I mean, there's surface disinfectants that have been tested against coronavirus, and they can make the claim. But he basically said, and I'm paraphrasing, but we don't have to uh, spend the money to study it because uh, because that's not the concern. Dental water lines are not the place where we need to worry about it. There's, and again, we'll let's talk about the other things that uh, uh, that co that COVID and uh, has brought about with dental water lines. The other problem with dental water. Lines. <laughs> um, I think I wanted. Yeah, we could. Can we talk? We could touch on air on the phobia. Everybody knows this. Everybody's wondering if how if they're. I, one of the questions we considered asking, asking all you folks if you're doing hand scaling or if you're going to use your cavitrons and, and ultrasonic scalers, because Kelly, you've been talking to people, right? And they're, and they're not sure how they're going to do hygiene in the near term, in the short term, right? Because of a phobia. It might not be a phobia. There's some legitimate concern. Phobia means uh, irrational fear. This might not be irrational to, to have some concerns about well, aerosols in general, um, but the aerosols from... Uh, Delinquent at water lines don't contain COVID, but they contain other pathogens that we do need to worry about. So this is the the opportunity, and Kelly B likes to talk about it. There's a really a positive marketing message. You guys, uh, I just want to commend everybody for being here today because we're zoomed out, we're sick of webinars too, and for you to be here this late in the game and still be professionally developing yourself, God bless you. That we we no you. <laughs> really are doing the right thing. And you will be one of those practices that actually shows off your infection control procedures coming out of COVID and your patients are going to be looking for it. So good on you. Good for you to, uh, to show off all your infection control procedures, not just your extra PPE uh, and your aerosol mitigation measures, but the stuff you've been doing for a while and the stuff you've been doing right. So good for you and good for you to be here today. Thanks for joining us. So Kelly T., COVID-19 inside of dental unit water lines, not the concern. The concern is what? Yeah, so yeah, got at the beginning, of course, got more calls. Hey, can this grow in my water lines? Can COVID-19 grow in my water bottles? And again, Mike, Mike, Mike touched on that. That's not really what we're worried about. But what we are worried, what is the concern, is that offices were shut down for a long period of time, right? Or you're just using, you're just seeing emergency, so you're not using them as much. So the increase in the non-use or the non-use leads to an increase in stagnation um, in the dental unit water lines. And then the increase in stagnation leads to more biofilm and biofilm is where the problem is for dental unit water lines. So biofilm is a, is a sticky kind of slime layer that gets on the insides of those water lines and that creates the perfect place for those pathogenic bacteria to grow. So um, the Legionella, the Pseudomonas, Mycobacterium abscessus, things that can hurt our patients, things that can hurt uh, dental professionals. Uh, so that's what we're worried about. We want to take that off the table because you do have enough to worry about with the aerosols coming from the patient's mouth. So we want your water lines to be clean. So it's really important to have a protocol in place uh, prior, to, prior to reopening. You want to make sure that your lines are safe and then just establish a really good protocol moving forward. And, and we've got your back. So we have this really cool document on our website. You can just go to proedgedental.com slash COVID-19. Um, and it'll, it's a, a reopen protocol. We had a shutdown protocol. I, it's still on there, I believe, right, Kelly? The shutdown, if, if you still it, need that. It, no, it's just the open pro, reopen. The reopen, pro. okay. So with the, the reopening, um, main thing, purging. We're not going to go too much into that because probably we're probably out of that stage. We'll touch on it a little bit. But if you are still two weeks out or more, really important to purge your water lines. Uh, and then shock, 
before you reopen and about one week before you reopen. And then you want to test at least three days um, prior to reopening. Because we again, we want to take that the worry of waterline contamination off the plate. We want to make sure your lines are safe before you reopen. You have enough other stuff to worry about. Let's not worry about the water lines. So real quick, before we get into the step two and step three of that, I want to ask how many of you um, purged your lines before shutting down your office? Yes, you purged all of them. Yes, you purged some of them. No, was I supposed to? No, I couldn't get back in after shutdown to purge. Or maybe your middle name is dangerous and you, you <laughs> really, I know it's really hard for me to be quiet because I would influence people to pick the funny answer. You know, yeah, right. We, we don't mean to make light of it, but uh, we are trying to have a little fun with you guys today. Um, so it looks like uh, pretty wide answers. Get those answers in. We'll stop the poll here in about 20 seconds. But did you purge before reopening? And purging, again, is flushing all the water out of the water lines and just so that air is in them and they're as dry as possible. Right. Uh, so did you do that before shutdown? I'm all right. I'm really curious about this question because uh, nice. Well, there you go. There's the answers. My this is the best group. Ever. Yes, five percent. Cool. Five <laughs> percent. One, one person's middle name is dangerous. Uh, I, I specifically made this uh, poll question anonymous. So that's awesome. <laughs> Well, there you go. Uh, so it looks like a lot of you either you did most of them or all of them or some of, some of them and a couple, uh, you know, maybe didn't know about it, but that's okay. We're going to help you make sure that you're reopening safely. So to that, Kelly T, as we go back to the office, what do we do? So yeah, so glad most of you guys purged. If not, uh, you may want to do that, get all that old water out of there. But the, the next thing and the first thing you want to do is you want to shock. Uh, shocking is using a strong chemical to clean out the insides of those water lines. And it's really important to use something that's effective, something that's proven effective. And we use data to prove this. And so we recommend a product made by Crosstex. It's called Liquid Ultra. It used to be called Sterilex. It's the pink stuff, a really good shock product, or just a simple diluted bleach solution. Uh, we have these on our, you can go to uh, proedgedental.com uh, slash shock for, for the bleach Solution. Is that right, Kelly? To, so you, if for the for the shock protocol, yes, you go to Yes, protocol. okay, yeah. Uh, and we'll go over that more in detail a little bit later. Uh, but also want to make sure if you're using a straw product, so the Dentapure straw, Sterosil straw, the Hugh 3D straw, any of the straws that are the low level antimicrobial, you don't want to shock. Um, and Kelly, yeah, Kelly can show that. You don't want to shock through those. You want to make sure that you use a, a dummy straw. We go those out complimentary. Um, you can just reach out to us for one of those. Kelly, do you have a, a what a dummy? Yeah, so um, this is a dummy straw. You see it pictured there and it's basically just an uptake tube. There's no antimicrobial properties to this uh, dark blue dummy straw is what we call them. Um, and they're, again, they're just an uptake tube. So you, it just makes it easy for you to shock. So you can take your straw off, you just twist it off and you twist this on. It's got the same uh, lure lock connector and makes it really easy. Uh, comes with instructions. Again, very simple, very, uh, uh, very easy to follow. You go to proedgedental.com slash dummy with a Y and you can request one of those. And again, those are only if you're using a straw, right, Kelly? Right, yeah, if you're using a tablet. So if you're using the uh, Blue Tab or ICX Citrusil, shot, or Citrusil tablets uh, or any tablet, uh, you don't need to use a dummy straw to shock with. You can just shock through your regular uptake tube it's just if you're using a straw product. And also um, you can reuse these. So you don't need, it's not a one-time use. You know, you can you can save it, use it over and over again. It's just an empty take up tube with a lure lock making it easy to shock with. So um, if you want one, great. We would be happy to send you one, but just hang on to it and you can use it every time you need to shock. And again, the reason being, if you shock through one of these with either of those solutions, you'll ruin it. And so yes. if you don't want to do that, obviously these are uh, expensive products. So. Um, what's the third step, Kelly? Yeah, so the third step is to test because we wanna make sure that that shock is effective. Uh, we usually don't tell you to shock and then test right away, but in this circumstance, we are. We're telling you, we, we wanna know that your lines are safe for you to reopen and for, your, for you and for your patients. And so 
Uh, you want to shock and then you want to test prior to seeing your, your patients to ensure that there's no biofilm in those lines. Uh, if, if you do test and it comes back that, that you're, you have a, a failing result, which is uh, greater than 500 colony forming units, um, then it'll just show you you need to shock again. Um, and that long, exterior, long extended period of non-use, we know um, from, from data that there's probably bacteria in those lines. So that's why it's really important to shock with something effective and then test to make sure you're safe before you open up. Even if you purged? Even if you purged. So um, you can, pur it, and glad that you purged and it, it, that, that's good. But the main thing is you can never get those lines 100% dry just because they're so, so tiny. And so bacteria can still grow in there. Uh, in fact, we're finding some problems with, with the biofilm kind of hardening. So it's really important that you do shock and test to make sure that you get rid of all that biofilm um, and you're safe to open from a water line standpoint and bacteria standpoint in your water lines. All right, so if we've got a tablet or a straw, we can shock, or if we have water bottle systems, we can shock. But what if we don't have water bottle systems? What if we're hooked up to a municipal line or have one of those uh, central systems well, what do we do then, Kelly? Yeah, boy, man, that is a main call that I've been getting. Like, hey, we have the city, we are directly hooked up to the city. How do I shock my lines? And I, I you know, that a lot of the times they, they don't like my answer, um, but it's really important. And, and we at ProEdge, we, we like the bottle system. It's really important to have that closed, closed bottle system um, so you can control the water that's going into your patient's mouth. So if you don't have uh, if you're, if you don't have water bottles, we suggest using this time to get your chairs retrofitted with bottles. Uh, now, if you're using a cartridge system, so Dentapir makes a cartridge system, Stericil, um, they kind they look right here. Uh, this is what the Dentapir one looks like. Um, great. Uh, but we still recommend that you get a bottle system so you can shock. Uh, it's just really important. Shocking is key to waterline maintenance. And without that bottle there, it's just, there, there's no way to shock. Um, and also you want to make sure that you test to, to prove that that shock and, and the, the protocol is effective. Uh, now, if you have a centralized system, something that kind of looks like this, really important that you, uh, now with this one specifically, you can shock it. You can have your maintenance technician or you, you can do it yourself. It's, it's kind of time consuming, um, but you can shock through this system. Uh, really important to do that, to sanitize it, to change all the filters, but to test. Uh, and we honestly see that offices that have water bottles do better. So if you're using into the, the, the cartridge or a centralized filter, or if you're hooked to uh, municipal supply, we recommend getting your, your units retrofitted with a water bottle. That way you can have clean water in 10 minutes with shocking, by shocking with diluted bleach. All right, so Mike, there's also a, a, an issue with uh, dental unit water lines and COVID-19 shutdowns that aren't actually specific to the dental unit itself. Can you kind of take us through what you and Shannon Mills uh, talked about and maybe first introduce who Shannon Mills is? Good point. A lot of you folks, uh, you know, probably have infection control consultants that come into your office and help train you on OSHA and other compliance and infection control compliance. And a lot of those people go to OSAP every year, which is the big meeting where they learn what's new. And they learn from really smart people. And those really smart people learn from people like John Molinari and Eve Cuny. And when John Molinari and Eve Cuny have a question they can't answer, they call Shannon Mills because he's kind of the top of the, he's at the, he's at the highest level of the University of Dealing at Waterline Nerds. <laughs> <laughs> I'm telling him you called him a nerd. No, it's <laughs> yes, don't tell him that. But so we called him right and asked him about this question. And Kelly, you did a great job on explaining that really the bugs that grow in dealing in the water lines grow there because the water lines are small. Generally speaking, the water that comes into our building and comes out of our faucets is good. It's drinkable, isn't it? What would you say, Kelly? 95, 97% of the time, source water, yeah. pictures, right? From the tap, yeah, source water, yeah, tap water is fine, yeah. The problem is, is that for the last six to eight weeks, water hasn't been flowing in the municipal, in the buildings. So the premise plumbing has been sitting stagnant. Now the pipes are much bigger, um, but the water usually flows a lot faster than dealing with water lines, but not lately it hasn't been flowing very much. So Health Canada came up with some guidance and, and Shannon agreed with it. And I think it's pretty simple. It's a very simple engineering fix. Just hit your... Uh, turn on all your sinks for a half an hour the week before you go back to work. 
uh, get in there and just spend a half hour, run all the lines, flush all the toilets. Don't just run every single faucet. If you got the little spigots, run those. Uh, if you got an eyewash station, of course, you want to run that longer than you would. He said a half hour should do it. You want to get the hypochlorinated water back into the lines and, and remove whatever's in there. And then you can just rest easy knowing that you're filling your bottles with water that's as good as it used to be before COVID. That's a good point. So, um, yeah, CDC has come out and said, hey, this is an issue we want to look at. And uh, Mike sat down with Shannon Mills. Um, and really went through this and talked about it at length. You can go to proedgedental.com slash mills, and that'll take you to a YouTube, YouTube video uh, where Shannon really dives into this and goes uh, deeper in if you're interested. But yet, want to flush those lines of your premise plumbing, um, showers, sinks, uh, toilets, get that water moving. Um, now, we're getting some really good questions on the Q&A. We're going to get to some of these, answer them in our... Uh, presentation, so I'm not going to go to them now, but stay with us. We are going to answer all the questions that are coming in. And again, keep them coming. They're great questions so far. So Kelly T, we know what to do with COVID. We know, we know there's some challenges there that we need to address, but why is bacteria in our water lines a problem, you know, regularly? Yeah. So, you know, I always like to, to, to start with the why. I think the why is so important. And I like to put a, a face to the why, because when you humanize it, it makes it, it makes it just that much more real. And so this little face, this sweet little girl, she uh, is one of the faces of the why, just one of the many faces of the, of the why behind waterline maintenance. So this is Mimi Morales. Uh, she was a seven-year-old little girl who got a routine pulpotomy. And um, she was, she was in the, in the infection that happened in, in Anaheim. Um, over 200 kids were infected. Uh, but she's just one of them. And I think she may have been the first one that, that they, uh, they found the infection in. But she developed a, just a severe, severe infection in her mouth. The, uh, the doctor that saw her, the infectious disease specialist, she said she has never seen such a severe oral infection in her whole, in her whole career. Uh, she had to have surgery to remove part of her jawbone, permanent teeth removed. Uh, she was hospitalized for, for, for more than a month. Uh, and had to re receive just heavy doses of antibiotics. Um, you know, they, they, I'm sure they tried the amoxicillin, the penicillin, the normal, the normal antibiotics that kids, that kids get, right? But finally what worked was the antibiotic that was created to treat leprosy. Uh, and that in itself comes with severe side effects. So this poor little thing and, and many others, um, you know, have permanent teeth gone, jaw bones removed, surgeries, and then this heavy dose antibiotic that creates uh, uh, severe, serious long lasting side effects. So she and many others are, are the why behind waterline maintenance. So Mimi was, like you said, Kelly, one of the first children uh, to be reported in the Anaheim outbreak. Mike, we were intimately involved in that and after that. Can you kind of take us through that? We got a call. <clears throat> Excuse me, we got a call from the Department of Health in uh, Orange County and asked us if we used R2A to test water. And when we said yes, they said, okay, uh, you'll be the ones that test the water. So we were uh, involved in, and we knew about the, the water testing side of it, but we didn't know about the human side of it. I, but the Orange County had a website, uh, website that I would look at every week or two to see how many kids were infected. And as Kelly mentioned, it started with Mimi and then a couple of weeks later, another kid showed up. And then a couple of weeks later, more kids showed up at the emergency room of Children's Hospital of Orange County. And, um, but, but we couldn't pay attention. So I would, just, I would just go to the website every week or so. Uh, and when it got to be about 20 kids, it was on the local news and I, uh, the, uh, in Southern California anyway, you folks might not have seen this, but there were newspaper, there were, newspaper, there, were, there were newsmen out front, TV news guys out in front of this dental clinic every morning in their van saying, it's a parent's worst nightmare. You take your kid to the dentist for a routine procedure and they end up in the hospital for months and they lose half a year of school. Uh, it was sort of sensationalizing it a bit and it was a black eye for that dentistry in, in, that, in that office. So um, when it got to be 30 kids, it was on big, bigger news and we got to be like 40 and 50 kids. I saw it on Good Morning America and CBS this morning. When it got to be 72 kids, they quit updating the website. So I did, we didn't know how many kids, but it was more than 73. Um, I, Kelly, you've got an update as to how many it ended up being, right? 
Yeah, so basically what we learned is that they stopped updating the website because of the litigation that was happening and uh, practices the practices involved were either being shut down or sold and um, it became a real large issue. Um, and so the final count is, is 200 patients with mycobacterium abscessus. Um, 200 children were infected and they're now part of that litigation. Uh, the trial was set for April that got delayed because of COVID-19 and they had to, you know, uh, prioritize criminal cases. Um, so it was pushed back to January, 2021, but, uh, you know, everything that we're hearing at OSAP boot camp this last winter, um, it's gonna, it's probably going to be, like you said, Mike, a real black eye for dentistry. It's going to come back into the news a lot and could be one of the biggest settlements that's ever happened. Um, a lot of people do know about Anaheim. Still a lot of dental professionals don't know about it, but a lot of them do because of how publicized it was. Um, but there are a lot of other cases that aren't publicized. So in uh, Atlanta in 2015, there was 35 patients that were infected with mycobacterium abscessus as well, all healthy patients. And there's litigation ongoing in that case as well. But every few months, every four to six months, ProEdge, the lab will get a call um, with uh, either a confirmed outbreak or a potential outbreak that hasn't uh, been completely linked yet or the dental professionals are really concerned and they haven't notified the health department. But um, you know, we've had single cases of mycobacterium abscesses in other places in California. We've had a, a, a dentist who got mycobacterium from Legionella directly linked to contaminated dental unit water lines. There's been um, uh, dentists in 1993, dentists in 1998, and multiple other cases that have been hushed because of litigation. So it is a concern that we know is more than just the Anaheim outbreak um, and something we, we need to pay attention to. So Kelly T, how does, you know, I fill my dental unit bottles with tap water. And like we talked about earlier, tap water is is good water. I drink it all the time. It tastes great, or maybe it doesn't taste great, but still seems to be safe. Um, so what's the problem with water lines in particular that we're, we're worried about? Yeah, so you're, you're right. You know, most tap water, like, like Mike said earlier, 95% of the time it's going to have good results. Now there are places in, in the U.S. That, that have some problems with their, their source water or whatnot, um, but, it's very, but it's very rare. Usually tap water is a good source. However, it's the problem lies in those little tiny water lines, um, uh, even the busiest practices. So when life is normal and you're seeing patients all throughout the day and you're super, super busy, you only are using your water line, your, your air water strand, your handpiece, you're only using them just a few seconds at a time here and there. So dental unit water lines are, are actually less like, like this, like a, like a running stream or river. And they're more like this, like a pond. And it's, you know, you know, I hate to say that. I, no one wants to think, oh, I'm squirting pond water or uh, this gross looking brown water into my patient's mouth. Uh, but the reality is that water, the water just sits stagnant. Um, so I like to think about it, the analogy of a, of a dandelion. Um, you know, every time you blow on this, a dandelion, what happens, the seeds kind of disperse about. Uh, the same thing happens with uh, biofilm that's in the water line. So every time you use that air water syringe or your handpiece, it just like blowing on that dandelion that just pushes that bacteria or that biofilm down downstream a little bit a little bit longer, um, and biofilm is stubborn. It's complex. It's uh, it's we, we know bacteria is everywhere, right? So um, while you're right, the tap water may be fine, but again, it's in the water lines, and then you're introducing you know back you're introducing bacteria with the air. And so the bacteria attaches to the small bore tubing. So, and they're, they're super, super tiny, right? So attaches, it starts to grow and mature, and then it detaches and it goes downstream when we use our air water strands, just kind of goes down a little bit, reattaches and just kind of the whole process starts over and over again. Um, it breaks off at different time, uh, times and random chunks. And, and I hate saying that word, random, but it does random chunks and uh, sloughs off, breaks off, and so it's just a different. It's hard to know. So um, it's it's just very complex, very sticky, very stubborn, and it's and it takes a strong chemical to really remove it. 
Now, real quick, I'm going to interject here um, because there's a couple of tough questions on the CE quiz that we're going to give you later um, through that ebook. And as I, as I recall, I, th these are the questions I missed when I took the quiz. And so you might want to take a picture of this slide. Just a slight and, hint. Not a, I mean, it's not just, just I, look. yeah. We're just giving you a little hint that maybe there's a couple of bullet points to pay more attention to here because <laughs> they're, they're kind of trickier in, uh, questions on the quiz. So take a picture, just letting you know, you might want to do that. All right, moving <laughs> on. So the question then becomes, what do we need to do to keep our patients safe and our practice safe really as well? And it, it all comes down to the CDC guidelines. So. CDC has obviously been in the news probably more than they ever thought they would be or hope to be in the last uh, several weeks, but uh, they've had guidance on dental unit water quality for uh, almost 17, over 17 years now. And so uh, it's well-established scientific basis. And uh, in fact, 33 state dental boards require CDC compliance as law. You can look at that map there at the top. We have a question coming in. Is there going to be any sort of you know, uh, legal enforcement. There are two states that have, that are working on legislation specifically to waterline testing. That would be California and Washington state. Um, those are still in the works, but uh, already as of right now, there are 33 states, all those light blue states, those 33 states require CDC compliance right now as law. And so the CDC compliance being dedicated to that, knowing what it's, what they suggest uh, and then performing that dedicated, that's what's going to keep your patients safe. And then the documentation of that is gonna be your practices protection. Should there ever be a, a complaint by a patient or a former staff member, a dental board or OSHA comes in, they're gonna to wanna to see documentation that you've been following the CDC recommendations. So what are those recommendations? Well, the first, we like to put the CDC recommendations in three pillars. Uh, Water for surgery, water for dental unit uh, or dental unit water quality, just regular care, routine care, and, and then verification of compliance. So let's dive into the first pillar here real quick. Sterile water for surgery. Anytime you're doing a surgical procedure, you want to use sterile water and sterile delivery system. Um, Kelly T, can you, can you flesh that out a little bit for us? Sure. So yeah, any oral surgical procedure, you must, it's the, and this is a must, you must use sterile water, but not only sterile water, but it has to be from a sterile source, from a sterile delivery system. So you can see on here the definition of what CDC defines surgical procedures as, um, but it's critical to use that sterile water from a sterile source. I uh, just wanna point out distilled water is not the same as sterile water. Uh, and you can't just open up a bottle of sterile water and pour it into your regular dental unit water bottle. When you do that, it's not sterile anymore. So using sterile water through your regular handpiece or through your uh, air water syringe, no longer sterile. So really, really important that you use that single use device, uh, bulb syringe, uh, a, a surgical handpiece that, that, that has a, a single use, um, you know, saline bag on it or whatnot that you then discard. But really, really important that you use sterile water from a sterile source for any kind of oral surgical procedure that is defined by the CDC. Now in the news just recently, there was a New Jersey dentist who was not doing this. He ended up giving endocarditis to 15 of his patients. 12 of them needed surgery. One of them uh, unfortunately passed away and all of them had no pre-existing conditions. This dentist has uh, since been suspended. Um, and with all these headlines and stuff, we're not trying to scare you, but it is, it, it, it is important that we know what the CDC recommends and why it recommends it so that we can follow those and not have these situations. So sterile water, sterile delivery system for all surgical procedures. So that's number one. We want to cross that off the list, make sure everybody is very clear on that. The second one is, is in large part the topic we're talking about today, dental unit water quality. What is the quality of water inside of our dental water lines? Um, and 
they make basically five recommendations. Um, and the first one is that it meets the EPA standard for potable or drinkable water. And that's less than or equal to 500 colony forming units of heterotrophic bacteria um, per milliliter of your water. Now they give you know these four different flags here. Those are different recommendations as to how you can achieve this standard, this 500 CFU standard. Um, but ultimately what matters is that you meet that standard. So you could use just a shock, you could use a chemical, you can use independent water bottles, so you can just flush or any combination of these. And if you're meeting that standard, perfect. Your okay. patients are, uh, the, the likelihood of pathogens surviving in your water lines is very low. So then the other piece becomes, well, how do you know if your water lines are there? The, the answer to that is testing. So the verification of compliance, and this is that third pillar. You wanna regularly test your protocol to make sure that it's getting you that 500 CFU standard. Uh, and then the other piece of that is you want to test regularly and have that verification. You want that documentation so that your practice is protected. Uh, and that includes documentation of water test results. That includes documentation of training. And that also includes having uh, standard operating procedures that are, that are documented in your office. And again, if OSHA or dental board comes in, you're able to point to, this is what our staff has been trained on. I know what to do. I know what to do if there's a failure and, and we follow this to the T. So those three pillars are gonna are what the CDC guidelines have. And, and we would suggest that you do the, these three, sterile water and sterile delivery systems for surgery. You find a protocol that consistently meets the, C, the, the EPA standard and you regularly test. There you go, you, you've got the protection you need. Uh, Kelly T, were you gonna say something? Yeah, I was just gonna, I was just gonna touch on, on one thing. I got a, a call last week that uh, from a, a dentist who, who did get inspected uh, in the, I, I think it was the Georgia Board of Dental, from the Georgia Dental Board or whatnot, came in with a badge and, and did inspections and the dentist didn't have proof of any of this. And so without documentation, it didn't happen, right? And so there's huge fines that come with it. So it's, it's if I know, you know, working as a nurse, if I didn't document something, it, it didn't happen. If I gave someone even a Tylenol and I didn't document that, then it didn't, it didn't happen. And so critical here too, if you don't, if you don't document what you're doing and what you're doing is working, then, and then it's, then it's hard to prove and you, you can't prove it. All right. So, um, Mike, a lot of practices are doing some combination of these four pillars to try and reach this standard. Um, we've looked at the data and this is in the Molinari ebook. Uh, tell us what it, what it showed. It is the most comprehensive study ever done on dental water waterlines. John Molinari and Nancy Dewhurst looked at 22,000 consecutive water test results that were anonymously compiled. And that's in the ebook that you guys can get at the end. And that's where the quiz is that we gave you the answers to. <laughs> Those were the questions. It was just a slight hint. That was just a slight hint. It's just subtle. Just good, it's just good teaching. Good job. <laughs> Um, but here's the what the overview is that that treated dental water lines fail 31% of the time. So a 69% pass rate is really nothing that uh, uh, brag about by any marketing department, but it opened our eyes. And so uh, realize that um, there's more to it than just buying a product. You have to follow the instructions for use. This is what Kelly T does all day, every day is review instructions for use. And those people that do that and shock regularly and use a tablet or a straw, get spectacular results. So when, if you look at the, uh, you know, we, we just said that source water passes 95% of the time, but if you use a tablet and a shock and you pass almost 90% of the time, that's almost perfect. It's really good. Um, and so it's really just a matter of, of using an, a low level antimicrobial uh, properly involves the, the occasional shock treatment and it might be more occasional than the marketing or the salesperson said the instructions for use may say something slightly different than the salesperson or the marketing department we love salespeople i'm the salesperson i blame <laughs> kelly i blame <laughs> kelly B. it's his fault he's in marketing he gave <laughs> anyway but the truth is um these products can all work they can all fail so it's not enough just to buy them you really need to monitor it and that's what the cdc says 
you know, uh, this, and that's what the science shows. The data prove it. Now, if if I'm using a tablet or a straw, these are good products, right? They've been tested. They they should be doing what they say that they're doing. But Kelly T, it really all goes back to the science. We say here, science says pairing straws or tablets with a strong regular shock will get the best results. So what does the science say about low level antimicrobials and biofilm? Well, Kelly, I just want to say real quick, this is a new picture on the right. And by what Kelly T said earlier about chunks, I think that's an appropriate, yeah. that's a chunk. Right, <laughs> yeah, that's a, that's a definite was slime me chunk. And this was recently, this just happened. So we just got this picture. So. Uh, so yeah, so low level antimicrobials, we love them. We love the tablets, we love the straws, they work great. They're designed to be continuously present in your water bottles and your water lines to maintain lines that are already clean. Uh, but when it comes up against what's here on the right, this slimy kind of, it looks so disgusting to me. When it comes up against that, um, it, it's, it's hard to work. And, and let me just reiterate that a lot of the times you're not gonna see this. You know, clearly, if you did see this, you'd, you'd probably send us a picture too and be like, what do I do? Right. So what this is what I got out. But most of the time we'll get we'll get samples in and they look clear. They look great. And when we test them, they have over 100,000 colony forming units of bacteria uh, because the biofilm is microscopic. Uh, like I said, it, it sloughs off. It breaks off in, in the chunks or just kind of rolls off or just kind of and, it, and it's microscopic. So you're not going to necessarily see this. If you saw this, right, you'd do something about it, hope, hopefully. Um, and it, or you'd, you'd be concerned, but most of the time you may not see it. Uh, so it kind of just all goes back to the science uh, of what the low-level antimicrobials can do against that stubborn biofilm. So, so here we have the little blue uh, guy with the, the, the shield and the sword. He is, he or she is representative of uh, the, the low-level antimicrobial. Uh, and can do can do a great job against low levels of bacteria because it's got to be safe to ingest, right? We're squirting this into our patient's mouth. It can't be something that we're cleaning our shower with, or it can't be something that's going to scour the inside of our patient's mouth. It's got to be something that's a low level antimicrobial. Um, but biofilm or bacteria keeps reinforcing itself. And so over time, it overtakes that, that low level antimicrobial. And so shocking becomes necessary, 100% necessary. Uh, and shocking, again, is using a strong chemical. So using that, the, the products that we, the, that we suggest, so the diluted bleach or the Crosstex, the Liquid Ultra, a strong chemical that's not safe to ingest that you don't want to put in your patient's mouth to clean out the insides of those water lines. Um, it's, it, it, if we don't want to clean our shower with something we can drink, right? So same thing with water lines. We want to clean those inside those water lines of something that's strong, that's effective, that's going to get all of that, that gunk out of there. Uh, and then the, the tablets or the straws or the low level antimicrobials will maintain them. They are great at maintaining lines that are already clean by shocking. And those are safe to ingest. Those are something that are, that are, that we use on patients. They're not going to be, they're not going to affect bonding. Uh, they're safe to ingest. Um, but over time, again, shocking becomes necessary. It's not a one and done type of kind of thing. So we're going to get to our proven protocol right now here next, but you know, I'm a, I'm a dummy. I'm not like the, uh, scientist registered nurse biology person below. I did not do well in my bio class in college. So I, the way that I understand this is brushing and dental cleaning. So your shock, when you do a shock, that's like your, that's like when I go to the dentist and get a, a professional cleaning by you, the dental health, healthcare professionals, and you use a scraper and a ultrasonic scaler and all that stuff to just really get that biofilm off of my teeth. It takes that. Now, now I'm ready to go to my house and maintain that cleanliness every day with, a, with daily brushing. So my brushing is my tablet or a straw and my uh, professional dental cleaning, that's the shock. And you need both of them to have a good protocol that's going to get great results every single time. So Kelly T, what's our... Yeah, exactly. That, that's a great analogy. I, I love that. Um, and, and, you know, pro again, we've been doing this for, for over 15 years. And so we see the data. So we have come up with the proven protocol, uh, what we like to call the three steps to safe water. Uh, the first step is is shocking. So 
using that strong chemical again, and I know I keep kind of saying this, but it's super, super important, using that strong chemical to get all that bacteria out of the lines. You want to shock before you start a treatment, especially now going back in, you definitely want to shock. Uh, you want to shock, shock quarterly. If you have a test that fails, you want to shock and then retest to make sure that it's safe. And also, if you're switching from one product to another, really, really important to, sh to shock. So if you're switching from a tablet to a, a different tablet, even make sure you shock or tablet to a straw or straw to a tablet, please shock. Every product is different and it's really important that you clean that line, those lines out. Uh, step two is treating continuously. So using that, that tablet, that straw, something designed to be continuously present in those water lines um, to maintain the lines that you get clean with shocking. And then step three is testing. Uh, and again, testing is your documentation. That's going to be your proof that step one and step two are working. Without that testing, it, you're not going to be able to prove it. And uh, OSEP recommends quarterly testing uh, to, to validate that protocol. Uh, and again, of course, if you have a test that fails, you're going to shock and then retest. So we looked at data and we said, okay, does that, does, does the frequency of testing does, and, and the regular testing, does that help? And what we found is yes, regular testing helps. Yeah, regular testing works. Uh, first time you test, you actually pass somewhere around 60% of your lines. Um, and we've looked at smaller subsets of data where it was 47% or 53%. But the more you test, you learn how to pass. You get that feedback to develop an effective protocol to learn how the products work really effectively to call Kelly T and say, hey, we seem to have some sort of source water issue. We, we're doing it all right and we still can't get passing lines. Um, and so you consult with Kelly T, she helps you play CSI and you get to the bottom of it and you know, okay, even though I was investing in a treatment product, now I actually do have CDC compliant lines um, and, and regular testing helps you get there. Now we looked at again, uh, frequency data and CHCs, community health clinics and government clinics are required to test quarterly in most cases uh, to get some of the funding that they get. And they also follow our proven protocol and look at those pass percentages, 95%. Ooh, I'd love to have 95% passing results in the dental office I go to. Um, the rest of us, general practice, DSOs, we do less than quarterly. And so our pass rate is, is closer to 73%. This was based on uh, over 40,000 tests um, uh, here in a recent just look at data that we did. Now, OSAP, if you're using a straw, you might be saying, or even a tablet, you might be saying, I don't think I need to test because these my product is, is really good. Well, uh, we always recommend you follow your instructions for use in terms of testing. The CDC says the same thing. OSAP says the same thing. However, OSAP in there, which was written by Shannon Mills and a few other infection control experts um, says even when those manufacturers instructions um, are absent or unclear as to whether you should be testing or how often you should be testing, they say you, you should be testing. Um, because again, looking at the data that we just showed, they're not perfect. So how often do you want to test? Again, they say you want to test monthly. Then once you have consecutive passing results, you move to testing at every three months at a minimum. So every quarter, every 90 days, every three months. Um, okay, Mike, real quick, what are our testing options? Uh, we can do, we basically have two choices. What are they? Yeah, well, you can do it yourself or you can do the mail-in. If you do the mail-in, that's you get third-party verification. Uh, if you ask for it from other people, you can get R2A. If you do it with us, we do R2A, period. Ours comes with overnight shipping that can be included in the price, which makes it easy to ship. It's easy to buy from your dental supply company too. You just buy it with your other merchandise. Um, and then you get, we incubate it for five to seven days and then we email you a report. And if there's anything but perfect perfection on there, you, you can talk to Kelly T and she'll help you get perfect results next time. The other choice is quick pass the in-office test and you can do it yourself. There's, a, there's other options out there. There's the red paddle by uh, Millipower HPTC. Um, but the nice thing that the people like about these, and I get this, is that they're 100% confidential. No one sees the results but me. It's not precise, but if it looks like, you know, if it's a pass, it's a pass. And if it's a fail, you're going to shock your water line. So you can use these. They're, suit, they're more economical because there's no FedEx involved. And uh, with QuickPass, it's only two to three day incubations. It's a shorter incubation. OSAP likes them. 
because you can do it more frequently, it's a good option. We, I think it's great. It's, it's kind of like testing your autoclave yourself, doing it yourself. Um, it's, a, it's, a, it's a little quicker, a little cheaper. Now, there's an option that we also have that can save on both laboratory testing or in-office testing. Take us through pooled or combined samples, Mike. If you're a cheap guy like me and you don't want to, and you want to look for every way to save money, if I was a doctor, I wouldn't necessarily buy one for every single line in my office, but I would buy one for every operatory. And I'd do a combined sample or a pooled sample or a co-mingled sample where I take equal amounts of water from all the devices in op one. So and let's say I've got an operatory one, I got two air water syringes, two high speed handpiece. It's a, if it's a quarter, a quarter, a quarter, and a quarter, and I pass that test, I've proven that all four of those lines are safe. If I fail, I don't know which one caused the failure, but I'm going to shock them all anyway. So um, at first, we were kind of scratching our heads, weren't we, Kelly B? We're saying, well, what does the science say about this? And uh, Kelly told us to take a look at, look at the science. And the truth is, false negatives are not, they're very rare. And it's, you know, because uh, either we're getting close to zero with a pass or we're failing at a very high number. So the chances that it falls in, in a range where there's a potential for a, a false negative are very low. Less than 3% of the time is it between two and 500. Um, that just, that's just the science, that's just the data showing that a pooled sample, if you pass a pooled sample, you can sleep good at night and you save 75% of the cost. I think it's a great option. So we're gonna wrap up here and uh, we're going a little long. You know, Mike, Kelly, and I just love Delina water lines. So uh, we're dorks. <laughs> sorry if we're going a little deep for you, but um, just so real quick, so you know what, what's available with ProEdge. So um, we have laboratory testing. Again, you get that third party verification. We use gold standard testing methods. That includes the RTOA uh, testing auger method, uh, which is recommended by OSAP, but it goes beyond that. Uh, vortexing of samples, germicidal neutralization, which OSAP recommends and is included uh, in our mail-in. Uh, basic long story short there, it just makes it more reliable, um, but also blind sampling. So uh, the data that we collect, uh, that's all anonymous. Nobody, the lab technicians have no idea where the samples came from. They have no idea what products are being used. Uh, the lab techs are just looking at a, a vial of water with no information about it and testing it. Um, also, overnight shipping is included with our, our kits, and we also have a subscription option, uh, which uh, is available if you want to have that reorder and you don't have to remember, you just get on that quarterly frequency. This is what our waterline test safety reports look like. So this gets emailed to you after the incubation and the, the testing process is completed. We email this to you. You get a, a precise microbial count, uh, a pass fail against the CDC standard, and then you also get a safety level, which is just kind of a red, green, yellow indicator as tr in terms of what are your next steps. And of course, you want to get lots of greens. Um, if you do a green, you call Mike. He'll do a happy dance for you. Mike, you want to give him? Yeah. Well, you don't want to see that. How about I won't do it? <laughs> uh, Nobody also, wants to see that. We also have the quick pass that Mike showed you. It's the in-office. It's blue paddle. Um, it's got advanced media that makes the bacteria grow red uh, on a white background, making it really easy to read. Uh, it's also 48 hour results. Uh, so making it really or much quicker than the mail-in. Uh, it's got germicidal neutralization included and makes that more reliable. And it's the most cost-effective uh, testing method. This is real quick, a, a side-by-side side, side -side comparison of uh, the quick pass, the blue paddle versus the red paddle, uh, which is HPTC. Uh, again, we love testing. We think it's important whatever method you use, but uh, there are some benefits of going with a quick pass, including how easy it is to read. This just shows the, the bacteria drawn red on the white background makes it a lot clearer, a lot simpler. Um, documentation, even if you're doing in office, you wanna keep records. So even though you're not sending the quick pass to us and we're not providing a lab report, you want to provide your own documentation of your quick pass. So you can download this off our website. Again, give yourself the, the red, yellow, green um, uh, safety level, depending on your results and the instructions for use go over that and how to do that. Uh, and that's your documentation and you'll be golden there. Now we also have blue tab. It's a waterline treatment product. Um, 
It's Dental Townie Award winner three years in a row. The last three years, we've won that award. Uh, and that's just voted on by people like you. So we're, we're proud of Blue Tab uh, and, and it's been a great product for a long time. Real quick, wanna make sure you guys know that we have video training resources available to you. Um, they are research-based and not boring. You can see uh, Kelly T and I uh, taking a look at a, an unfortunate quick pass test result. There. Beautiful facial expression, right, Mike? Yeah, we, <laughs> <laughs> it's all about looking good. Um, <laughs> It's, one of them, you, Kelly eats a donut on one of them too. That's, I think that's my favorite. I do eat a donut. And um, so, yeah, basically my role in those videos is to uh, have fun. And Kelly's job <laughs> is to, Kelly T's job is to help you guys out. But we also have uh, Mike, the last uh, several weeks has worked with infection control experts to launch uh, micro compliance conversations with Mike Rust. Uh, going over a wide variety of topics, including water lines, but how to reopen aerosols, um, you know, pra uh, uh, the uh, entrance of patients and how to, how to handle patients as we're coming at reopening with COVID and, and your lobby, that sort of thing. Uh, so go to proedgedental.com slash YouTube and you can find lots of videos there. Last, They're but great. Last but not least is complimentary consultations. This is talking to Kelly T and her team. Um, you can learn best practices and improve your test results. Again, she plays CSI. She knows all the tips and tricks and her team knows all those tips and tricks to help you get better results really quickly um, or develop a protocol that, you know, after this webinar, you're thinking, hey, I need to develop a protocol or maybe your friend who isn't on this webinar needs to develop a protocol. We can help them do that. Um, but last thing, and, and I want to touch on that is, is Kelly T and her team helps you may use your treatment products more effectively. So you don't call her and get a, a sermon on the benefits of blue tab. Um, so she's happy to tell you about blue tab and we're proud of that product. Like I said, but she understands uh, our team is fanatical about understanding instructions for use and looking at the data and the science to determine when do these products work most effectively. And so we can help you switch up source waters or, or simply know the instructions for use uh, uh, better so that you can use your treatment products more effectively. So uh, we'll share contact information at the end of this, but set up a consultation with her, call us, we're always here for you. Uh, that's the end of uh, the meat of our webinar, but we've got a couple of gifts for you here at the end. Um, but first we just wanna thank you. Thank you for investing in your patient safety. Thank you for valuing high standards of infection control. We know that uh, you know a lot of this stuff is done behind closed doors. And there's not somebody coming into your office looking over your shoulder. And um, it's just the integrity of dental professionals that keep us safe. So we thank you so much for that. Uh, now we get to play a little bit of Santa Claus. Um, Mike, do you have your beard in? No? Uh. Your beard ready? No. Okay, so here's how you get CE. Uh, you wanna take a picture of this slide because uh, it can be a little bit confusing for people. Um, so go to proedgedental.com slash COVID-19. Don't go to some other URL, go to that one. Um, proedgedental.com slash COVID-19. You scroll down, you'll see John Molinari uh, and Nancy do her uh, beautiful faces. Click the download button. You'll download a 10 page ebook. And then on page 20 of that 10 page ebook, you'll have a link to CDE World to take a quiz. Now I know you're saying, this guy's had too many videos where he's eating donuts because his brain's not working. How can there be a page 20 on a 10 page ebook? I promised it's true. Look at the bottom of the pages. There's pay on page 20, you'll see page numbers on the bottom of the pages. Um, go to page 20 and uh, you, can, you can see that quiz and then you'll be able to access that link. Then use the promo code CTIC um, during checkout. And here's the deal, guys. It is May 20th, which means today is the last day you can do this for free. Uh, tomorrow, that promo code expires and it becomes $18. So you want to get this in today. Uh, and that's all through CDE World. So uh, while we'd be happy to help you out because you're a part of this webinar, uh, I can't guarantee you they will. So that's out of our hands. Today is the last day to do this uh, and get it for free. And then, of course, you got to pass the test. So hopefully you took pictures of the slides we talked about, um, but otherwise you're golden. Um, 
uh, we've got some complimentary samples uh, we're happy to send you. So uh, we know that the, you know, when we, we talked about COVID-19 as a team, when this first started happening, there's financial concerns all around. So we wanted to uh, try and make this a little bit easier as best we could. Um, so we, we're gonna send you a, a free month supply of blue tab and a free quick pass in office water test kit so you can start uh, the testing process for free. Um, so if you want to request that, you can go to proedgedental.com slash webinar sample, proedgedental.com slash webinar sample, uh, enter the password in this together, all one word and lowercase, and then submit that form. And um, you'll be able, we'll send those out as soon as possible. Uh, so hopefully that'll help you out a little bit. Um, Mike and Kelly, we've got some Q&A, excited to get to that. Some great questions coming in. If there are other questions, please, please, please uh, enter them into the Q&A and we will uh, go over those now. I'll come back to the CE slide and the complimentary slide here in a second, but just real quick, I wanna uh, put our contact information up there. Um, also, when you exit out of this Q&A, there will be a survey. Uh, we, we love your feedback. Um, if you can share that with us, we always want to do better for you. So any feedback is appreciated. All right, Mike and Kelly, we've got some great questions. Um, this one comes in anonymously. Can you shock a Cavatron machine? That's a great, that's another great question. But um, it, it almost certainly you can shock a Cavatron. The only time that you wouldn't be able to is if for some reason it's pl still plumbed to city water, which does happen occasionally, but, but usually there's a quick connect that goes to the, a unit in the, in the operatory, and that quick connect goes to the water bottle, so you can shock it. So attempt to shock it using either bleach or liquid ultra, um, and if you see pink stuff coming out the line, um, you'll know that you, you've successfully introduced the shock product in, into the Cavitron and into all the lines. Um, if you have questions, call Kelly T. She's seen this before. I've made every mistake there is to make on, the, on this one. And uh, what, one, one other thing, if you have a Cavitron um, that you use, that you share between operatories, we really recommend that you shock it in every operatory. That means you're going to shock that same Cavitron in both of the hygiene rooms, for example, or whichever, wherever they are, because you're not just shocking the Cavitron lines, you're also shocking the water lines that go from the water bottle in each operatory to that quick connect where you plug in the Cavitron lines. Confused? Me too. My brain hurts. It's about to explode. And ca Cavitron lines actually will fail more than any other line. Um, because no, not not Cavitron specifically. No, that, oh. no, no, I'm sorry, scalar, scalar, yes. Scalar lines will fail more than in there. Sorry, yes, sorry about that. Um, so you do want to make sure that you do treat and shock them. I, I also have found, uh, or you know, from consultations that they are a lot of the times plumbed directly to city. So really important to find out. And if they are, I would highly, highly, highly recommend that you get them retrofitted to a bottle so you can treat and shock them. Um, dense ply Cavitron, they actually recommend shocking weekly with diluted bleach. Um, so really, really important to, to shock those and to treat them. And if they're not hooked to a, a bottle, I would, I would get them retrofitted. Cavitron has good customer service too. I would, I would say Cavitron, whatever, whoever your scaler is, whatever your, whoever makes your ultrasonic scaler, uh, we would defer to their instructions for use and their, uh, and their people for how to, how to shock their systems. They, generally speaking, it's part of it's part of their instructions for use. It has to be. Yeah. Um, okay, Mike. So Fatima is asking about pooled samples. Do you use a vial to test every water line or every bottle? And it's a great question. Touched on it, but just to reiterate, how do we do that? Yeah, I would. I would take. Uh, I, you you don't want to combine samples from different operatories or from different water bottles. Some of your operatories may have a two bottles, one at 12 o'clock for the assistant and one chair side for the doctor. So you'd want to, you could do combined samples from, from each of those bottles, but not from both of those bottles. I think I said that really poorly. <laughs> so the way it's worded in Washington, the legislation is they said from every unit. So from every unit that has a water bottle, you can take combined samples from all the water lines in that unit. There may be two units in a given operatory. 
That's kind of a nomenclature kind of thing. You know, you might call it a, an op, op one, but op one occasionally will have more than one unit. It may have a 12 o'clock delivery unit and a, and a chair site. But if you've got multiple bottles, you want to test those differently as, a, as two pooled samples. Correct. So if you've got a, air, a dental assistant side bottle and a dental side bottle, you'd want to test those lines. You can pool all the lines connected to each of those bottles, but at right. that point you'd want to to uh files either mail in or quick pass um all right so we've confused somebody uh weird <laughs> so I, this person has understood that running bleach through the lines could release mercury from the amalgam separators please clarify so we get this question all the time we're talking about two different kinds of water lines right kelly t what help us help yes. us delineate these so you're absolutely correct. You do not want to put uh, bleach down your evacuation lines at all. So we're talking about the water lines that are in the, your bottle that are going to be feeding your, your air water syringe, your hand piece, uh, your scalar lines. Uh, the evacuation lines, they have different shock. They do, do have shock products, but they're completely different. You don't want to put any shock product, whether it be the liquid ultra, diluted bleach. We don't recommend putting any shock product down the evacuation lines, especially that, that diluted bleach, because it will uh, interfere with the amalgam separator. We don't want that shock product going into your evacuation lines. So uh, when you're shocking your water lines with the diluted bleach, um, you just, you want to flush into a cup or into a bucket and then dump it down a sink. Or if there's a sink nearby that's not attached to the unit, so not, not like a cuspid or anything like that, but just a sink in the unit. If your lines can reach that, you can definitely flush into there. But you do not want to flush your water line shock into your evacuation lines. Those are two different lines. Get that question a lot. Um, but you're right. You don't want to put bleach down there. Uh, but these are the different set of lines. So we've got a couple of questions about uh, legislation. Um, Mike, can you talk, tell us about California and Washington state legislation? Sure. Um, and it's a, another great question. Um, and there, I, saw, I saw a question too about enforcement too, so we can touch on that a little bit. But in, in Washington state, it looks, the wording we've seen, and again, this won't happen until 2021, right, Kelly? We think Kelly- Washington state, yeah. Yeah, Washington state, 2021. The wording at, at currently is test every line, every quarter, but you can use combined samples, right? Um, and that's probably not gonna happen, it, probably till the end of 2021, something like that. California, um, they're basically saying you should test your water lines in accordance to the manufacturer's instructions, which is essentially the CDC guidelines, the instructions from either uh, the dental unit manufacturer, ADEC, you know, or something like that, or the product that you use, Stericil, Denipur, Blue Tab. Most of the tablet companies say you, they want you to test monthly, then quarterly. So quarterly testing is coming soon to a state near you. Um, as far as the enforcement of it, uh, uh, Kelly B can, can, can go can talk about the CDC and which states. Uh, you know, he's got he's got a good map on a good website on that. But the short answer is, if you get inspected, they look at your water test results, and that's where that document where you document it is really helpful. So yeah, the, you hopefully you can see it's not too big. But if you have any trouble or want to know your state specific, we can get you the legislative language in terms of CDC compliance. But 30 street, 33 state dental boards do require that. Currently, California and Washington state do not. That's why they're working on uh, specific legislation for water lines. Um, but yeah, we hear of um, either OSHA or a dental boards responding to complaints and walking into the office, carrying the CDC infection prevention checklist and saying, show me your water test results. And mm -hmm. uh, at that point, we get some we get some scared calls because that there isn't always uh, there isn't always that in, in the office. So that's why we recommend that. That's why you wanna follow the CDC recommendations. Um, all right, so Fatima wants a clarification. So when do we shock? Do we only shock if we fail a quarterly test? Kelly T, what, do you, what would we say to that? So you wanna shock, um, we recommend shocking quarterly. So de definitely if you fail a test, uh, we recommend you, you definitely wanna take corrective action and then test to prove that you were, you know, you, you passed. Uh, but we recommend testing quarterly. So um, 
Mike, you you explained this really well on how, how to do it. But during COVID, I just want to explain, like going back to work right now after COVID, it's really important to shock and test right away because we want to make sure that that shock is effective. Uh, when life kind of gets back to normal and we want to just have a really good protocol in place. Um, Mike, do you want to explain that, that you it do so much better? Sure. Right, let's, just, let's just pretend that... Um... June 1 is your start date. You're going to go back to treating more patients than you are now. So this, we're, you know, here we are, May 20th. Let's say, so the week before June 20th, you want to get in the office. You want to shock your water lines. That You may have to do it three nights in a row if, 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 you, if that's what your protocol recommends. If you, even if you use bleach, you, want to, you might want to do it more than once. And then you want to test it. And that's the cool thing about quick pass is you'll get a result in a couple of days. Um, and then you're hopefully you're good to go. So you want to shock and test immediately. Moving forward, Kelly says it great. Shock on the first day of every quarter. Use your favorite tablet or straw. Test on the last day of the quarter. And no matter what your results are, uh, you want to shock again every quarter. So I, li I like the way it was, uh, she asked that question. She said, should we shock after a quarterly failure? I'd say shock after a quarterly pass too. In other words, just shock every quarter. Uh, you know, like I say, I'm cheap. I, if, if, I, if you use bleach, it's pretty cheap to shock your water lines, you know? Um, so. And the other thing we, you know, what's, what's our, what's our, uh, uh, what, what, what's our bone here? Well, we want you to get great test results every single time. So, um, you know, we find that practices that, that follow this protocol do that. If you, if you test, you pass, and then you don't shock, and then you have a failure the next time, uh, that's not going to feel great. And then it, it's just more time. It's more money. It's more stress. Um, so you, you want to just get on a quarterly testing protocol and a quarterly shocking protocol and just get great results every single time. Get 95% passing results. Have this checked off the list, not something you're worried about. Um, and, and, and as Mike says, sleep good at night. Um, so Azita is asking about the dummy straw. So Kelly T, can you go over the dummy straw one more time and, and when to use it, how to use it, etc. Absolutely. So if you're using the, uh, the Dentapure straw, Hugh Freedy straw, Sterosol straw, and you want to shock and you want to shock with cross tex liquid ultra or diluted bleach, you need to remove that straw um, and use a dummy straw and it is pictured here to shock with. So when they installed or when you installed your sterosol straw or denim straw, whichever straw you have, uh, they cut your take up to very short. And so you, you can't, you can't shock. So this just, you just twist this, your, your straw off, twist the dummy straw on, and it just lengthens your take up tube. So then you can, you have the ability to shock with, with the products that we're recommending here. Um, they're strong, they're effective. We know they work, but they cannot be safely put through that low level antimicrobial straw. So they, the cross sex liquid ultra or diluted bleach cannot go through any of the straws. It's, it's very critical that you remove those, use a dummy straw. We give them out complimentary. Um, and they just, they just lengthen your take up tube. That's all they do. Yeah. So Zita, you can go to proedgedental.com slash dummy and request that one, that from us. Um, these, it, with the, the, the straws that are on the market, they're not included, unfortunately, because part of their Part of their spiel is you don't have to do that. So, uh, which again, going through this whole webinar, hopefully you realize that's not necessarily the case. Uh, hint, hint, there may be a straw coming out that does, um, but that's down the road. Um, so uh, yeah, go to proedgedental.com slash dummy. You can request this. We'll send it to you complimentary. Again, reusable. And this is only if you're using a straw. If you've got a tablet, uh, you don't need that. You've got the long uptake tube still uh, still attached. You're good to go. Um, um, yes. So uh, some people may not understand that the tube looking structure that sits in the water bottle is called a straw. So yeah, we call it dummy straw. We call it uptake tube, take up tube. Um, it, yeah, like Mike said, with the other things, it's nomenclature. It's kind of whatever is whatever it's called in your circles, but. It's, it's just an empty tube. Temporary. It's a temporary take-up tube, right? That's No antimicrobial properties to this. This can't shock your lines. It just makes it possible to remove your straw and still suck water line or suck the shock solution into your water lines. So hopefully right. we've made that sense. It made sense there. If you have any troubles, 
um, Azita, give uh, Kelly T an email or call. Um, okay, so after shocking the water line, do we need to replace the sterile straw? Kelly T? Um, so after you, you mean, is your sterile straw ready to be replaced or is it just kind of just after? She just says after shocking the water line. So after, you, yeah, after you, so when you take your sterile straw off to shock with, um, yeah, you can put it back on after you shock, but you want to make sure that you use that dummy straw to not only put the chemical into your water lines, but also when you're flushing it out. Um, and then when you flush everything out, you can you can put your straw back on, the, the sterile back on and, and use it like you would um, normally. So as long as it's not time to, to change it out, if it's, if it's you know been a year or however long, or if your tests show that you, you may need to replace it sooner, then, then yeah, you, you, I, would re, I would replace it. But if, if you're just shocking, you can definitely put that back on and, and use it. So if you did, if you were using sterile straw and you did shock through it with diluted bleach or cross-sex liquid ultra, that potentially could ruin the straw. So at that point, you might need to replace it. But if you're yes. just doing regular shocking and you took the straw off and you put the uptake tube on and you shock through it, then you're good to go. Now, sterile straw, uh, can be shocked through with citrusyl shock. It's made, they're both made by sterosyl, and that's the only straw shock combination that uh, you can shock through the straw. So I don't know who asked this question, but if, if that's you and you use sterosyl straw and you shock through it with citrusyl shock, you're okay. Uh, the we just don't recommend that product we because uh, again, just looking at the data, the most effective products out there, cross-sex liquid ultra and diluted bleach solution. But uh, hopefully that makes sense. And if you have any more questions with that, you can, you can uh, talk to Kelly T. It looks like it's a pretty new straw, so I don't need to replace it there. Um, uh, you just put it back on after you're done shocking. Um, all right, so we, we have one more question maybe. Um, this, this person's talking about how uh, if you're, if you've got a handpiece, should also be using sterile water if troughing the bone. Um, so Mike, do you know, are you familiar with that? It's a surgical procedure. You want to use sterile water from a sterile source and that high speed handpiece that you use for surgery will certainly have uh, probably an external uh, port for uh, a disposable single use water line, definitely in a water line. So if you're doing any kind of surgery at all, you don't want to use your normal air water syringe and your normal high speed handpiece. You don't want to put, as Kelly T said, you ster you, sterile water is not sterile once it goes into a regular deadline water line. So sterile water from a sterile source uh, with the, with the handpiece, uh, again, use their external water port and, and use a disposable sterile delivery device. So, uh, and this is the definition straight from the CDC as to what a, a surgical procedure is. Uh, you can access that from, if you, get, if you just Google 2003 CDC dental infection control guidelines, you can see that, um, but you might take a picture of that as well, just so you, you have that, that's, that's their definition. Um, yeah. Now we, we've got one more story here of, uh, hey, just FYI, we shocked the Cavatron at a charity event in Sacramento and it blew off the Cavatron filter. I don't know anything about that, but I just wanted to say, what an interesting charity event. Right. <laughs> and good for you for attending the charity event. And uh, hopefully the, the, that you got it fixed in time to treat some patients for free. Uh, God bless you for doing that. That's very cool. Oh, got it. Got it. I thought it was like a fundraiser, but you're saying it was uh, to give. Good I, my assumption, it was an accident. Right. Yeah. Um, well, anyway, hopefully, I'm sorry, I thought it was like a fundraising event and you're just shocking Cavatron units at the, at the fundraising. You know, I, today's, today's audience was so great uh, and Kelly showing that picture uh, and saying that, you know, if you've got some gross biofilm, send it in. It sounds like, sounds like a photo contest is in the works. Right. Send us your idea. Can you beat this picture of biofilm? <laughs> the measurement will have to be whether you know how many. Yeah, <laughs> it reflex. It elicits. Yeah. 
All right. Well, everybody, thank you so much for being with us. Um, I want to show the CE slide again. Uh, you can take a picture of that. Um, if there are any other questions, you can pop them in the Q&A here real quick. Um, but uh, Kelly T, Mike, any parting words of wisdom for our dedicated dental professionals today? I say thank you for being a great group because uh, we loved your answers. Thanks for participating. Thanks for asking good questions. And, and thanks for everything you do. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah, thanks for joining us. We know, like Mike said, you're probably, you know, Zoom webinar out um, throughout this crazy time in, in life. Uh, so we're so we're so thankful that you joined us today. Uh, and just really want to reach, at, you know, let you know that we are available for, for consultation. So please reach out if you have any questions. Um, no matter where, even if you don't test with us, if you test somewhere else and you, and you get, you know, bad results and you just want a consultation, we are here to help. We just want, uh, we don't want another, uh, another little kid to get sick or we don't want you to have um, an inspection and, and get in trouble. We, we want to help you. We honestly want to help you. So please reach out. Uh, we are here for you. Um, despite the testing that you use, despite the product you use, uh, we're, we're here to help and we will help you get the best results possible. And lastly, just pulling up this slide for the, the samples, you get a month supply sample of blue tab and uh, you also can get a free quick pass water test. Uh, we'll ship those out to you as soon as possible. Go to proagedental.com slash, slash, slash webinar sample and uh, the password in this together, submit that form. We'll get that out to you. Thank you guys so much. Thank uh, you. Hope you have a great Thank you. day. And uh, we'll see you on the next webinar, maybe. Yes. <laughs> have a good day. Thank you.